Good morning. This is Marshall Davis. This is another episode in which I am exploring the non-dual teachings of Jesus. Rivers have played an important part in my life, including my spiritual life. One of my earliest memories is fly fishing on the one Lancet River with my grandfather. I was baptized by immersion in the Crane River north of Boston, where the river meets the sea, and I have often thought that was symbolic of my spiritual life. For many years, my wife and I lived at different places along the Ohio River Valley, in Cincinnati, and in Louisville, and in Pittsburgh. In Massachusetts, we lived on the Merrimack River. We seemed to migrate to rivers. One of my favorite spots throughout my whole life and to this day is Loa Falls on the Swift River in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. For years, I would return annually to that spot to meditate. Even when I lived hundreds of miles away, all I had to do was sit on a rock in the middle of the river, and I was immediately one with God and the universe. When the film A River Runs Through It, about fly fishing in Montana, starring Brad Pitt. When that was released, the opening word struck a chord with me. I'll just, I'll just quote the first sentence. It says, Eventually all things merge into one, and a river runs through it. When I first read Herman Hesse's book Siddhartha in the 1960s, like everyone else did in the 1960s, the closing vision that Siddhartha had by the river captivated me, and I knew then that it was true. In fact, when I authored my modern retelling of Bunyan's classic Pilgrim's Progress a few years ago, which I entitled The Seeker's Journey, I recreated that scene in a dream sequence that the main character had before crossing the river into the celestial city. For me, Rivers and also other bodies of water, like oceans and lakes, have carried a spiritual message that I was never really able to fully comprehend with my mind, but I understood intuitively with my spirit. As Paul says, speaking spiritual truths in spiritual words. They speak of our true nature and our relationship to reality. You can never go wrong by meditating by a river. Rivers are the best spiritual director. In the Bible, rivers mark important moments in the life of Israel and the main characters of the Bible. The first sermon that I ever preached when I was a student in seminary was about the transformation that happened to Jacob at the Jabbok River. And of course, there are the Many famous stories that take place at the Jordan River in the Old Testament and the New Testament, not the least of which was the awakening of Jesus to his true nature as the Christ at his baptism in the Jordan. In the Gospel of John, Jesus is said to utter these words on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem, which we call the rock in the wilderness from which flowed water. Paul wrote that that rock is Christ. Jesus said on that occasion, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Jesus said to the woman at the well, Whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again, but the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I am aware of this river bubbling up to eternal life. I am the stillness, and a river runs through me. The problem is that I regularly forget this and fail to pay attention to this. But that river is always there, flowing and murmuring in the background. The book of Revelation pictures the kingdom of God as the river of life flowing from the throne of God. A river 
as a metaphor for reality as seen from the human perspective. In my last episode, I mentioned that I'm reading a book by J.C. Ambercelli entitled Coming to Nothing and Finding Everything. In that book, he mentions a regular Buddhist meditation group that he was a part of in prison. It was a snowy day, and the regular meditation teacher uh, could not come to the prison, so an inmate took over the leadership of the session for the day, and after a period of meditation, the leader posed this question. How do each of you get through your day? And he writes here. The answers come slowly, grudgingly it seems, like something you would hear at a prison AA meeting where no one does the steps. Jack works all day, Brian reads a lot, Eddie watches TV and exercises, Al works, then plays cards until lockdown at 9.30 p.m. Of the eight of us, not one mentions meditation, although two claim they study Buddhist Dharma. When it's my turn, I suddenly realize I am not mentally prepared, so I blurt out, I don't get through the day, the day gets through me. That's the way it seems to me. The day runs through me like a river. We can see ourselves as going through the day or as the day going through us. It really is a matter of perspective. If we are awareness and not a personal object in awareness, then everything goes through us. And isn't that really the way it looks? Everything appears to move through us, this spacious presence that we, that is us. It is often said that we come into the world at birth and leave the world at death. That's how people ordinarily frame our lives. But is that true in our own direct experience? Do we come here and leave here? Or are we always here and things come and go? Back to the river metaphor. What exactly is a river? Is it the water? Well, the water changes by the second. As Heraclitus famously said, no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it's not the same river and he is not the same man. Is the, earth the, is the river the earth and banks? Is it the riverbed? Is it the rocks in the river that it flows over? It's none of these things. Yet, it includes all these things. It's the same with us. We are the open stillness through which life flows. We are not the objects that appear in awareness, including this human object that we mistake for ourselves. And yet, objects, or seem to be objects, give shape to our lives just as the water, the banks, and the rocks give shape to the river. The default human perception of our lives is that we are these meaty, fleshy objects called body, bodies moving through time. But when we actually look, we see that everything is moving in time through us, dwelling in eternity. A river of time and space flows through us. We cannot hold on to this time-space world or the things in this world, what we consider to be our lives, any more than a river can hold on to the water that flows through it. And yet the water shapes our lives, as do the banks and the sand and the rocks and the waves and the ripples and the sunlight glinting on the water and the water bugs flitting on the surface of the river. Jesus said that when we are in him, which is what it means to believe in him, it's about believing we are in him, not believing doctrines about him. When we are in him, Jesus says, then rivers of living water will flow from within. 
Jesus said, whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again, but the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. A river is one metaphor that Jesus used to communicate what he called the kingdom of God or eternal life. Eternal life is not the never-ending existence of the human ego in some far away celestial realm. That sounds more like hell to me, to be forever separate from God and trapped in a little individual ego, even if that ego is, is a never-ending worship and service to an, an imagined supernatural ego. Neither God nor we are separate egos. To make God into a big divine ego is to make God in our own image. Reality is exactly the opposite, as the book of Genesis says. The kingdom of God is in us, and us in the kingdom. We are in God, and God in us. Eternal life is not a personal possession that we own as separate individuals. Eternal life is what we are in God. It is this reality now, this reality of possessing nothing but one with everything. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is not a theory or a doctrine or a philosophy or a religion. This is direct experience. Just look for yourself and see. This is the kingdom of God. That's it for today. Grace and peace to you.